Hi everyone. Um, I'm in my kitchen, just so you know, it's, it's going to be echoing in here. And I've got you on my tripod, so I could knock you. Um, I'm going to do a um, sort of craft with me come tutorial with Arteza acrylic paints on fabric. Now, um, I'll just show you what I did in my trials. I did, this was like a stencil. It did um, blur a little bit. Um, this was also a stencil. Um, I made a stamp here for that. So this is my stamp that I made. Sorry, just get all, what is that on there? I don't want any bits on the stamp. Um, this was a stencil here. Um, I probably should have sprayed the stencil with some removable spray adhesive and then um, done it, but it does make your fabric a little bit sticky. This is a um, Indian block print that I have. And that's another stencil there. And I actually, these were the later ones. I got better at it um, as I kept trying. This is another stamp that I made, Christmas tree. I love the color too. Um, and then I just painted those lines on there. Um, that was my stamp again. And then that was some painting that I did on the fabric. And I absolutely love that. Um, some more of my Christmas trees, just a little bodgy painting. Um, some lines and then I did some linen, some stamping and some painting and that's another stamp that I that I made. Am I on screen? Uh, yes, I think so. Over here I need to be. Um, oh, so you probably didn't see those. I'm not far enough over. I need to be more over here. Okay, so they're my stamps I made. Now these, um, I added more water into it and you can see it's quite stiff. But it's not going to crack because I put in some medium into it. But I need to iron them as well. But I do like the effect of these because they kind of um, blurred a lot. So that those were my attempts. I've got some paper down on my mat to protect it. Um, I've also got some, I'll show you what paint brushes I've got. I'm oh, a bit of a mess over here. I've got two things of water because you need a lot of water. I've got these brushes. I've got my Filbert. I love that. Um, just a round tip. I don't know if I'm going to use them. And then this one here. This is a stencil one. I don't know if I'll do stenciling today. Um, and then these are really good. This is what I use to put the paint on my stamps. Okay. The other thing I got at the antique market the other day are these beautiful wooden hand carved block prints. So I'm going to do these today as well. See how we go with those. That's really exciting to me. And then the other most is besides water, paper towel. I've got an old towel here that's actually even better than paper towel because you just wipe your brush on there and don't worry about it. The next most essential thing is Liquitex or another brand, a fabric medium. Now this will um, help the paints become um, permanent on your fabric. And when you iron it, it sets it. And also, um, if you were to paint, you can just paint with acrylic paint onto fabric. Like if it was in a journal or something, you wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, but it does make the fabric stiff and um, it does, uh, it could crack if you sort of fold the page over. So um, this is a good thing. And I did, I'm glad I experimented before I, um, did the video because I found this says one part paint, one part um, medium. However, I find um, it's uh, better. I liked it more. It flowed better. I felt like I had to add water otherwise. It flowed better if I put um, a lot of medium and not very much paint. That's what was best for me. Um, I've also got a couple of plates here in my palette as well because it sort of spreads out a lot and you find that you need um, quite a bit. The fabrics I'm going to have a play with are just a vintage cotton. I've ironed everything because I'm a good girl. Um, so vintage cotton. I've got um, sort of a coarser hemp here that I've ironed. And I'll probably... Oh, did I bring my scissors? Uh-oh, I didn't bring my scissors. Okay, well, I won't be cutting them, will I? I've got this gorgeous linen here. And then um, I've got a finer, a finer hemp as well. So I'll just have a sip of coffee. I can't believe I didn't bring my scissors. I knew I forgot something. Okay. 
So maybe I'll put you on pause and go and get my scissors. What a good idea. Okay, I am back. So, first of all, I've got to decide on what colour. I did do some more colour charts yesterday. I'll just stand up and show you. Um, and uh, so I've been, you know, there's, I'm discovering, like, I love all these, this, especially this row of colours, the third row, I really love. So um, I love these colours down here. So I am slowly going to continue on and just play around with a lot of the colours and um, and see which ones I like the best. So already I could use this. Maybe I might like to play with this range of colours here even. Um, what was that? Thallow blue and pale yellow. I liked that. I also loved it with the deep yellow and the purple. So anyway, so that's a good way to see, um, you know, how your colours work. And I love these grey, grey, bluey grey tones as well. They're wonderful. So that was Prussian blue and light apricot. Mm -hmm. I wonder what I will play with. Um, I even like the Prussian blue with the pink. So, oh, what about that one? Yellow, pale and Prussian blue. So let's get that out. Um, got my fresh and blue right here, so that's it there. And I've got to find. I just love the, I love these trays. So I'll just pull those out. It makes my life easier and get rid of the box. I should have done that before. Actually, I was going to do that before, but I'm in a bit of a flap. And then the, the grumpy courier came by today, and um, so I had to go and open the door to him. And I was about to start my video. So I'll just get rid of the box, I don't need that, and I'll put my colours over there, and I need, which yellow I need? One of those yellows, I've got my blue, and I'll put my pinks over there. I'm going to use my plate, I think, and I brought a few, because you do tend to, um, you do tend to need a lot. Now what did I say I liked? I liked, I highly recommend doing this play with colours. Maybe I'm going to do Prussian blue, and so I don't need too too much of the. Well, I need a bit of it, but I don't need too much paint because, as I said, I'm going to use more medium, and I need pale yellow, and I only need a tiny drop of that because uh, now at the bottom of my chart, my, as you saw in my previous video, there's only a tiny bit added to it. Oops, and I dropped my paint in it. Okay, so just a tiny little bit so less than the blue it probably won't make the same color you, now you need to be warned um, I don't know if you you know look at, if any of you paint so it's a good thing I use this kind of brush to um, mix it get my color okay now I know that looks very dark but just a second we're going to thin it out we are going to thin it out with this and I'm going to put a lot of this so yes you will use a lot of this if you're going to be doing it on fabric and I'm just going to grab my colour and really mix it in. Look at that. How cool is that? So I guess the medium is working a little bit like the water. But you need to mix a lot of paint because, um, especially if you're going to use the stamps or the block print. So I think that should be good. I might make a bit more medium. See, it's using a lot, but I'm going to do a lot with it. I may not use do a million colours today because I'm going to try all the different techniques. So maybe we'll just use this mixture that I'm doing here. Okay, so, yep, that'll do. I'll just wash my brush and put it onto my towel. And I'll move all of these out of the way. And I need a piece of paper. I've got my scissors. So I would like to, well, maybe on the cotton, on the vintage cotton, I may test out some of my, I'm a bit crowded here, this is what I need, my vintage, my ones that I bought at the antique market yesterday. Okay, so that's my fabric and I've got this one here. So I'm just going to wet this, probably don't need to wet it. I'm not an expert. This is a new thing I'm dabbling in. So I guess it's a, you know, like... You can also paint with, um, with what's it called? Um, probably need a bit more. 
So you paint it onto the, this is why these are good. Or you could have a roller, people use rollers. Now this may not work, that's why we're just doing it on the vintage cotton, that's not such an important fabric. Okay. See how we go. You can do your own block printing. Oh, and I love it. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more there. Oh, yes, this is really great. Okay. You can see it uses quite a bit. So it's not a cheap thing to do because you've got to buy the medium. As I said, you, depending what you're using it for, you could do it without the medium. Probably got enough on there. Okay. And then um, I'll probably do a video and show you, I'll have a play with some of these things and show you what I did with them. Oh, I just love it. And I don't think, I think, you know, you don't need expensive paints to be able to do this. You can, these, you know, the paints that um, I got from Arteza are perfect. Isn't that wonderful? So what I need to do here, if I want to be really clever, well, I think I'm clever. A bit more. See how much I've used. I've used quite a bit. But, um... Oops, not a good idea to go over the top. Now I've got my paper covering my, um, I'm gonna put it there. Love, 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 love it. This is wonderful. And then, and also we'll, it'll be interesting when it dries. Of course, I'll show you all of that. So here I'm gonna do the top. I need to put the top on there. Okay. There we go. So that's my first one. Um, now, I don't. I probably, I'll wash that off afterwards, and let's do another one. Let's do this one. I've still got this colour left, so I'll go on with this colour. How exciting! This is just like a dream come true for me. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Wonderful. I am actually standing up so you will be able to hear me because I'm standing right, I think I'm standing right near the microphone. I'm probably too loud. I'll probably blow your ears off. Just love it. Oh, the other thing is I'm actually out of my rubber block for carving stamps, but if you were interested in seeing how to do that, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of videos showing that. Um, I'm happy to do a video. I'm not an expert at that either. My stamps are quite simple and quite bodgy, but it's a very fun therapeutic thing to do. And I'll tell you what, Lulu has done it as well. So if Lulu can do it, you can all do it. Okay, that's that stamp. So really, you're just coming along with me while I test out all my stamps because I couldn't wait. Just going to show you all these different little things that I did. I hadn't actually tried these, I only bought these yesterday. Did I buy them yesterday? What was yesterday? No, not yesterday, Sunday. Oh wow! Fabulous! You can see the sun's gone behind a cloud. I'm running out of paint. Oh, I'm so excited. And you can see how I used my colour chart to get my colour. Rather than sitting here thinking, umming and ahhing, what colour am I going to use? Oh, I don't even care if it's pale. And that can go there. And we'll consider that done. Right, I need to mix some more colour. Okay. Right, you can just stay there. Let's just put this over here to dry a little bit while I'm 
I'm just going to, will I do a bit more blue? Maybe, maybe what I could do is add a bit more pale yellow. Why don't we do that and get a bit more of a greeny colour? See what happens. So you just add um, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Now I've got a different brush. Where's my other brush? Oops, I, should, I didn't lay that down flat, silly girl. I'll bring it back in a second. Here's my brush. So let's mix the colours with this brush first. Get our greeny colour, greeny blue. Make sure you mix it fairly well. It doesn't matter if you get streaks because, um, because oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to put my medium in. I need quite a bit of medium, I think. I'm going to run out of this medium. I'm going to have to buy more because I love it. Actually, what I might do, I'll just show you before I mix it all in. I'll just grab my thing. Very limited with space here. It's it's quite hard. Okay, because also the um, this is very wet. I don't want to ruin all of the hard work. Um, okay, because my um, I'm on the tripod, so. All right, I keep wanting to dip it in the water. Here I am. So you can, you can do. Um, so you, it, without with less flow, um, medium, you need more medium to help it flow better. But also, that also when it dries, it's softer. But I'm going to do be doing all different kinds of. And I've got a bit more flute medium in here. And I like the colour more, you see, when I get more medium in it. Because it's not as dense. So even more medium. And it gets paler. But I can use these bits and pieces in my sewing, which I'm really excited about, or on journals. So I'm going to mix all of that in there and do some more stamping. So I think it's a really great idea to experiment before you do anything that you'd be sorry if you messed it up um, because I had a few goes at it. Just getting the right um, sort of mix as well. I'll just use that. And you can do lines, you can do all kinds of stuff. Okay, so I'll wash that and we'll put this over here. Might be a little bit off screen. And um, I'm going to grab what stamp haven't I tried? I had another one, just a sec. Here it is. I've got this border. I've got to try that border and see how that turns out. So, oh, I should wash the blue out. Not that it really matters because it's from the same family. And that's why it's great to have your towel because it soaks up all of the water. I know my towel's off screen, but I can't, I couldn't fit everything on screen. Now, this one looks fairly. Um, old and used this border so um, who knows if it'll work oh my wordy lordy it's beautiful whoops too much you see I've got too much there just smoosh it along spread it out And I'm definitely glad I like I got the the medium because I I like things to be a little bit um, sort of faded out. I just turned it around the other way. See, I had a bit too much there. That you can see that I had too much on there. We'll do five rows. love the color so just by adding a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more of a color you can um, you can 
get various variations, but they they work together because they've got the same. They're made of the same colours, just in different proportions. So let's just slide you along here. I'm going to, this one I'm really excited about. Look at this one. Can you see that? I better have a sip of coffee. I'm getting a bit overexcited. Um, okay, right. Let's get cracking. So here I don't, I don't have to... Actually, I thought it would take a lot, but this one's not going to take too much because it's only those bits you need to get it on. I should have bought more of these. I've never seen them. I mean, I have seen them at the markets before, but they're very pricey, but this man had them for a good price. So, my idea with this one was to do, oh my goodness, an all-over design. And what I looked for, if you come across this sort of thing, because you can quite often, I don't know if these are Italian or Indian, because you know in this area it's traditional to do block printing. Um, I've showed you the fabrics before. Um, but um, I looked for ones that had um, like a good surface, because my other um, Indian one, I'll just pull that one out so you can compare. I should have brought it in and tried it again. This one had, see, very fine lines and it didn't take the colour as well. I still like it and I'll still do something with it, um, but it didn't take the colour as well. So this one basically you're supposed to do, I think, it's going to be, look, it'd be very nice in blue and white. It's a tile pattern. I'm so excited. And now that I've figured out, you know, my quantities, and you can see as well, um, it's working better and when it dries it won't be as stiff as the ones that have more paint I'll tell you what will be stiffer I'll show you those darker bits will be stiffer and they'll be softer oh wow it's fantastic And I do have some other ideas with the paints as well, so I might... Oh, I, did, I shouldn't have done that. Um, let me just flip that over there. And I'm just going to try it. It might be a bit pale for the linen. It might be too pale for the linen. Let me see. Oh, it could be really beautiful. Oh, I do really like it. It's very subtle. So what I needed to do really was to put it on the bottom half or the top half, whatever. Just make sure it's all covered evenly and then I'm going to stamp here. It's very subtle. Yep, okay. Might just do a little bit more on there just so I've got a bit of a pattern to play with. So I think, I actually like um, putting the paint on with these spongy things. You can get them in all different sizes. I think I've got another size here, this one. Is, so you can get them in all different sizes, but um, I think I'm gonna put it at a different level. And I, I'm gonna keep this um, paper in the background because you can do stuff with it. Like it'll eventually be covered with um, mess, but then it might be really cool background for something. Okay, so that'll do with that one. And then I wanted to show you my, oh, I needed to finish that bit off. I might as well finish that off, might not, because I've got the same color. I should, I should finish it off, sorry guys. I'll just finish it off. I'm running out of space. I brought in like two things of water and I probably won't even use them all because I'm not actually really painting very much, am I? Okay. Love it. And then I just need some here. I'm going to put them 
in a different height like I did with the other one. Didn't get enough paint on there. Okay. Just move my water. There we go. So that is one piece done that I can then tear up into bits and pieces and play with. So I'm just going to put that on over here to dry. Sorry, I just moved, walked away for a second. And we might have a little play with this one. And on this one, I would like to... Where have my stamps gone? Here they are. Um, I would like to... And I'd like... Where's my... Oh, yes, that one would be nice. I'll try and get a bit more colour in there. Just make it a little bit darker. And even if you weren't to sort of mix in your colours perfectly, you'd get that a nice ombre sort of effect. And these stamps, I just literally washed them afterwards. You can't tell, but <laughs> I did. Oh, I love it. Really nice. Don't you like it when you love, love your what you're doing? Now, with the carved stamps, you have to be careful. Like, I've, I've carved out the veins there of the leaves. If they fill up too much with paint, then um, they're not. They just, they're all a blur. There we go. Look how well they stamp. So we're nearly finished this colour, so I'll do a couple more. And then we'll maybe we'll mix another colour. How long have I been? Got no idea. Gotta go and pick up Lulu soon. So I've been doing these Arteza videos um, over a period of time. Just while I developed my ideas but I can't tell you what fun I'm having. It's, a, it's an incredible distraction to what I should be doing. It's taking me away from what I should be doing, but um, I just love it. And it's really nice to do something different, I think, up there. So I'm creating, creating my little pattern, you see? Creating my own fabrics, my own printed or stamped, I should say, fabrics. And I think in my head there are certain colours I think I like on the fabrics. I really like the blues, the greens. Um, I really love that sort of bluey sort of red. There we go. That's all I'll do with that one. I'll have to wash all of those afterwards. Let me just check the time. It is 1.10. Plenty of time. Okay, so we've got time maybe to mix another colour. So... I didn't do a Christmas tree, it doesn't matter, the Christmas tree will be done with another colour, so I need to give that a good old wash, that sponge, put all the colour, I'll move that plate aside to be washed, <coughs> excuse me, and let's have a look here at the reds, <coughs> I love that colour, I do like the, I do like the cochineal colour as well, that, that's just the pure colour and then that's the mixed with the yellow, I like the pure colour. Um, I didn't mix the cochineal with the um, Prussian blue, did I? Oh, yes, I did there. I like that colour. But then it goes more purpley there. Um, or otherwise, I might like um, that sort of colour. Decisions are the worst. That sort of colour. I'm going to do the phthalo blue, actually. I'm just going to stay with the blues. I, as you know, I, blue is one of my favourite colours. I just always go to blue. Now, where's my phthalo blue? I think I'm saying it right. Phthalo, I don't know. It's P-T-H. Of course, it's under the mask. Mask, where's it gone? Oh, there it is. It's there with the purples. 
Okay, so I was looking at where which one was I looking at? The Thablo Blue. Oh, now I've lost myself. Prussian Blue, that's all Prussian Blue. That one with the yellow pale again. And I liked, oops, sorry guys, the one in the middle. So I've got the blue. And we'll do a similar amount of maybe a little bit less yellow. And then I'll mix it. That looks about right. And then I'm going to add plenty of medium here. Oh my goodness, I'm going to run out of medium straight away to buy some more. Very nice turquoisey colour has come out of that. And rather than wasting this, oh, what I could do, for example, although I wouldn't do with that, no. But you know what I did? I got the end of this and put dots. Look at that. Of course, there's no method to my madness. Just put them anywhere. Put them everywhere. It's fun. I love this colour. And maybe one over there. And another one over there. And there. One up there. There you go. So that's how what you can do with that. That's a that's a stenciling sponge. Um, and then here, I'll just, what will I do, some, what will I do, maybe just some, some lines again, maybe some, some like running stitch sort of lines. And these are all things that you can just use bits and pieces of. You don't have to use a huge, big thing. Okay, so I'm going to just wash that. And I might just quickly, and I'll do it afterwards. I'm going to do my Christmas tree. Where's my, there's my Christmas tree right in front of my face. Oh, I haven't got my sponge ready. Just a second. Okay. Hopefully I got the colour out of there. Give it a good squeeze on my thing. Oh, well, it might mix in a bit with the other green. Don't have time to go over there and wash it. So paint it onto my little stamp here. Okay, let's see how we go. Aren't these two colours just the best? There we go. Oh, oh, you can't see. There we go. Oh, and you don't want to be doing this directly onto your mat because um, it comes through the fabric. Okay. And like in between the trees, I could put, you know, like sort of red dots or green dots or whatever you like. I could have done the trees upside down so they went across in a row, you know, one up and one down. If you know what I mean. 
Now I've got that in my grooves there, so who knows what's going to happen. Might be a bodgy tree. Oh, not too bad. You see there, that's what happens if you get too much in your lines. Now what I would like to do, I know I haven't cleaned the feather um, stay too much. Where's my big, oh here. I wanted to try this one because I think this, this stamp will be lovely with blue. Of course you could alternate colours as well. Oh my goodness, I just love it. In there. As I said, I'm not using these in big pieces. I'll probably use bits and pieces. So I'm not too concerned about, you know, my pattern being perfect. If I were doing a big piece of fabric, I would be. You know, like if I were wanting to use it to do something else. Oh, goodness gracious, can you hear the noise they make? Okay, and then I'm just going to do um, half of this. You can see how this turned out. This was so easy to carve. Like, I don't do very intricate designs in my carving because I'm not an expert stamp carver. But it's a really easy way to get lines there there we go I didn't do too good a job there but it's not too bad okay so we'll put that one aside to dry you can see it goes through the fabric I'll be back in a sec here I am okay so now I've got my hemp and what I might do with this little piece that I've got left is we'll try the stencil. Now the stencil, I haven't got any spray on my stencil um, because I noticed it made um, the fabric sticky. The stencils don't work out perfectly. Um, they do not work out perfectly. Let me just, that's just a disclaimer. Um, I might just add a bit more, a tiny bit more medium there. So I have enough. That's flowing. My colour is flowing. And we'll just do a little stencil just so you can see. So of course I haven't used all the colours, but I will I think I will continue to use these. I'm just going to try it. This is not a stencil brush. I should use my stencil brush, shouldn't I? Here it is. Get the colour on there. That's better. So that area where I didn't use a stencil brush, it'd probably be bodgy. Because for the stencing, you probably need a bit, quite a bit of medium. I won't go too high up because I don't know what mess I'm making. I know you can hardly see me, but I'll show you in a sec. Ooh, it's better with not too much on it. Oh, and then there was another thing I did with it as well that you can do with the the paints too so I'll show you that in a second as well so oh that worked out well look at that so I'll just move it I'll show you just put that over there look so that's stenciling on the fabric but do use one of these spongy stencil brushes that must be used um, now the other thing I did and I'll just cut one was I wet my fabric in some water And here you want to play with the, the colours a little bit, but I've got some nice colour there. I didn't do it with the medium in there, but um, I just did it with the um, paint. 
and it was very watered down the paint so let me I'm not going to use this again so because we're nearly done so let me just water this down a lot here and it's a bit inspired by Artie Mae she did it with her um, Tim Holtz things just get this and then just go and probably a good idea to wear gloves yep, I need some more just go like this smoosh it around and you can kind of dye your fabric you see get some nice dyed fabric that way look at that and then you hang it out to dry and it actually dries a bit paler so that's how I dyed the fabrics how cool is that so my hands were a bit dirty there we go so that's my ideas with the paint on fabric I think I've done everything if I come across anything that I missed I will come back and do another video um, and I'll show you afterwards when they're dry what I made so thank you so much for watching and thank you so much Arteza for the paints I absolutely love them they're great fun especially when you're not really a painter like me you don't want anything that's um, overpriced and for what I want to do with it they don't have I mean these are very good quality is what I want to say for what I want to do so um, I'm thoroughly enjoying them so thank you so much everybody and thank you to Arteza and I will be back soon bye okay so we just finished uh preparing uh printing on or well, painting on the fabrics i should say so i didn't show you at the end of the video um what i had done i didn't give you a summary so i'll attach this at the end of the video um the fabrics have been ironed although they're getting a bit crinkly because they've been lying around um but i just love the colors of them and i'm so looking forward to using them um, I'll probably be using them in collage. I may decide to embroider. They could go on journal covers. I don't know. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet what I'm going to be doing with them. But um, I just wanted to show you. Um, I just love the colour. Love how they turned out. So that's those. Um, and some of my other ones that I had done, I've started using them a little bit. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of things. So I'm just doing this um, embroidery, it's not quite finished, but I've, this is that um, background one that you saw and I've been embroidering on it and attaching things. I don't know what I'm going to use that for. Um, I'm also working on a Tracy Fox design team project and I've been using them um, in, in bits and pieces in what I'm doing for her. So here as well. And I just love that little touch on oh, that's got the little um, stenciled one absolutely love this one with the stencil there um, that one I didn't use it so yeah just to give you an idea I am that's the stenciled one underneath there so I am using them and I really like the effect of them so um, I hope you give it a go uh, it's super fun and don't forget the discount code below and um, you can click on any of the links and it will take you directly to the product so thank you for watching on to the next one bye